how to make a good YouTube video. <laughs> well, there's a lot of good ones out there, and there's a lot of really crappy ones, because no thought was put into them. Well, first, the technical stuff, like lighting, wind, your subject. I was filming from that point of view, so the light would be on my face, but diffuse, so I wouldn't have to squint my eyes. I could have filmed with that in the background, and then my face would have looked dark. That's not good. So generally, you try to make your shots so the light is shining on the subject and the light is at the back of the camera person. Next is wind. Well, wind really muffles your sound and overpowers what's going on. And modern cameras have a sound dimming system in them that reduces sound when a lot of wind hits the microphone, so that extra muffles the voice or the subject of what's going on. So try to plan your shots so the wind's not hitting the microphone. The next thing is shaky camera shots. Especially the more you zoom in on something, it amplifies the shake that your body gives or that the wind is giving your body. So try to plan how you're going to hold the camera or compensate for automobile movement or anything jostling you so you don't have a shaky shot. Next is most people who are amateurs film everything too close. They just walk right up to it and kind of just think that we can see things the way they can see them out of their eyes. Humans have a field of view that's almost 180 degrees wide. That means we can see almost sideways. Well, cameras don't have a very wild, wide field of view. It's an average of only 30 or 40 degrees. So you can always just stand back so the audience can see the full picture because they don't know what's going on, but you do. And you can just zoom in later. That makes a good video. Next thing, if your subject of the video is important, don't film it in a kind of shot like this where there's so much background, you really don't know what the subject is. Next, have a plan for your video, like a beginning, a climax, an end, like a little story, like something that holds your interest. Just don't grab a camera and start filming and sort of leave you cut off at the end and you wondered what happened, or you sort, or you sort of wondered where the video started from in the beginning, you're just all of a sudden at too much subject and you really don't know what's going on, so do have a plan. So if you just happen to be filming something, you never know what it could be, a person or an object, and all of a sudden you notice there's just a big spider or a mouse runs by, or something interesting that catches your attention, grab that too. Human nature likes randomness in life. It, it makes things more real and kind of funny too. It sort of breaks the monotony or boringness of possibly a scene in a video. Now if you make a long video, you have to make a good story. Something's going to hold your attention, or at least you anticipate the ending, so you want to watch the whole thing. Think about that. Also, if the video is very intense and riveting and just holds your attention, it doesn't matter how long it is, people will want to watch it. In general, there's such an overabundance of video material on the internet that it's really hard to hold a viewer's attention. So in general, you try to make your video quick, you know, one to two minutes or even less and then you know right away they lose the attention span just by looking at the number on the video if it says five or ten minutes unless they know it's a great video they might not click on it to watch it now a couple of videos I just recently made had to do with blowing up pumpkins with airbags well I could have did it the usual way I could have just got a pumpkin left it the way it was shoved an airbag in it and blew it up well the way the mind works because part of the making videos is psychology is if the pumpkin has an expression or a face, it humanizes it. It makes it more in a way that you can identify with it and even have an emotion for its possible imaginary personality. So I carved my pumpkins with a face and I gave that face an expression that would show what I would look like if I knew I was going to get my head blown off in two seconds. Secondly, when you're searching for videos on YouTube, if you see that little picture of a pumpkin in the sidebar and it has an expression on its face like that, it gets your interest going. And then you read the title, and then you see it might have a lot of views or whatever, and it sounds more interesting. So you'll click on it to watch it. And then right away, that video's got a whole pile, a lot more views than it would have if you just made a regular blank face on that pumpkin or no face at all. Another thing for good videos to hold your attention and make them more enjoyable is have an audience. If you're going to do something that's interesting and people are going to laugh, 
that means your audience is going to laugh too. And having an audience response in a video makes the video much more entertaining and enjoyable because laughing is contagious. People want to laugh with other people. It's just genetics. They can't help it. They do. So we have things on sitcoms, you know, TV shows that are comedies called canned laughter. Pre-recorded laughter from other shows, which some editor puts on exactly at the right time to make the show more entertaining, even though it was filmed on a soundstage and there was nothing else there, just the people with the cameras and the lights, and you know, the sound people. So that's very important too. Watch David Blaine or one of those street entertainers. They always film every, everything with an audience. It makes everything more fun, more real, more watchable. Now for the content of your videos. For example, there's jackass content. Those are people with no skill who find comedy in hurting themselves. I'm not like that. I try to plan at least a little bit of sophistication in my videos and I do my best not to get hurt. That very rarely happens. But you do have to plan something that's watchable. You know, something that's going to hold their interest. In my videos, my common theme is a little bit bizarre. You know, kind of things that you thought of but you wondered if anybody would do them or has done them. That's kind of my theme and it goes along with the automotive content I put out in my videos. Comedy is probably the most common theme for popular videos. Now if it looks like you're acting, that doesn't really get adults that excited. For children, a lot of the most famous uh, YouTube channels have a bunch of people who are usually in their late teens or early twenties acting, it's obvious, and they're acting stupid or funny. And this really gets a lot of views and they become like superstars on YouTube, well for children under 10 and stuff like that. But that's not my theme. If you want a theme that adults like, the comedy seems to have to be real and timed right and fit into the scene and not look like acting or someone running around with a bag on their head or jumping around or edit editing their voice to sound like chipmunks or something like that. Next thing is, unless your videos are obviously meant to be stupid, make it real. Make the video believable, like it really happened, that it doesn't look phony, and that it looks like there's some skill involved. Skill is important. Anybody can do something stupid or anybody can film something, but if there's some skill involved, that, else, that holds your attention. With my videos of demented redneck antics, including beer and whatever, I add a little bit of understated hidden genius, you know. You're always wondering what you might learn, or actually you might realize, well, there, there's obviously more behind the scenes than it looks like. You know, there's actually some thought went into this. This guy's actually thinking about what he's doing and this is interesting. Maybe I will learn something. Maybe I won't feel so guilty that I'm just wasting my life watching YouTube videos or some videos like that on Metcalf.com or whatever. If you want to make a repair video, well guess, guess what? It's expected to be kind of boring. It's a technical video. So try to think of something to say or do or just something to change the subject a little bit while you're doing it so that it's funny. And it just that holds your attention too. It's just not a repair video. Next thing is, some people don't even speak on their own videos. They just point the camera and slowly pan it around and show things and people don't like that. People are voyeuristic who are watching YouTube. It's our human nature. We're curious. We want to hear what that person sounds like. We want to hear his accent. We want to be able to tell how old he is. Just stuff like that. Also, don't be afraid to show your face. Unless there's something wrong with it, or you're going to get in trouble. Because that's another thing about human nature. They believe in people more and trust them more when they can look them in the eyes and see their face and have an imagination of who they're dealing with. First impressions are important. Also, if you notice all modern programming, to make every scene a little less boring, for example, someone's talking, they'll shoot that person talking from like three or four different angles. One looking at their face, one from shooting them from behind, one from the side view. They even do this in the news, stuff like that. It just holds your attention better if the scenes keep changing. Your brain all of a sudden and your eyes just start wandering a little bit if uh, the, sit the same scene goes on for more than 10 or 15 seconds. So that's why they do that. It's just the way all videos and movies are produced now, commercials, anything, pretty much anything. The next thing is multi-layered stories. This is the way things are done all the time today too. It doesn't matter if it's a cartoon, it doesn't matter if it's a sitcom, or it doesn't matter whether it's a movie. There's one main theme or story, which is the plot, 
But then there's always other things going on in the background with different members of the family or, diff or different members of the program or whatever the subject's about. They all have lives too. So there's all these little sub-stories happening at the same time, which scenes keep breaking and going to a different story, but then your brain automatically puts everything back together when the scene goes back to the original plot. It's just how we're designed to process information, and movie editors and studio editors know all about that, and it holds our attention and makes the movie or the program or the video a lot less boring. When I went on YouTube, I had a plan. You've heard parts of it already. But it was a plan. I watched a lot of different television programs, like popular shows like Cartoons and Simpsons, you know, Howard Stern, all kinds of different things that were popular on TV and long-lasting for reruns, just to see what makes a good program a good program and keeps holding people's attention and keeps making them laugh and keeps bringing them back. Well, studying all that and using the tips I just gave you, it worked. Who would have guessed an old man as gray and as wrinkly as a 47 year old like me would be such a popular hit for the younger generation and people like that who are watching me on YouTube. But that was my plan. I went on YouTube without ever expecting to make a dime. There was no such thing as the partner program back then and a way of putting AdSense on your videos and making income from it. That was all just a bonus. I went on YouTube for one sole purpose, mostly. Well, one, I enjoy making videos, I always have, but really it was just to get in contact with my two stolen sons. The one so, I had a motive, and that's what I worked for. So I put a lot of effort into making videos that you people would enjoy. So thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something from my tutorial. Cool.